Hello, and welcome to the XDS podcast. My name is Dave Sanderson. I'm a member of the XDS Advisory Committee and Director of External Development at Phoenix Labs. I have the pleasure of introducing today's episode, which features one of my absolute favorite people in external development, Shuyi Lo. Shuyi is one of, if not the most experienced people working in art outsourcing. Her career in XDev spans nearly 20 years, and today she serves as the Senior Outsourcing Manager, Emerging Studios and R&D Projects at Riot Games. I've known Shuyi for years, and she is someone that I deeply admire, not only because of her skill at her craft, but also because she's just one of the most authentic, enthusiastic people you'll ever meet. I've never seen her without a smile on her face, and if you ever get the chance to chat with her, I know that it won't be long before you're both laughing. As a parent, I'm also particularly grateful for and admire how she advocates for working mothers in the games industry. She delivered the talk that you'll be hearing today at XDS Ignite, which for those who don't know is a smaller companion event to XDS. It takes place in the spring, right before GDC, and is primarily an opportunity for XDev folks in the developer community to come together, to connect with their peers, and most importantly, to learn from each other. Shuyi's presentation, called Creating an Environment for Effective Communication, was quite possibly the most valuable 30 minutes of the entire event. Don't be fooled by the simple title. This presentation is packed with practical, insightful lessons on the communication challenges faced by Western and non-Western teams when they work together, and it's delivered by one of the most experienced and capable leaders in our field. I'm delighted that Shuyi's talk is being shared as part of the XDS podcast, if only so that I can come back and refer to it again and again in the future. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. I have no doubt that you will. And now, Shuyi Lo. Today, I'd like to talk about creative environment for creating an environment for effective communication. I got a lot of questions about how do I get my non-Western artist point of contact to talk and ask more questions, so on and so forth. How do I get them to be proactive and engaging? So this is why I put this together. And again, my name is Shu Yi, like the shoe on your feet. And I'm a senior outsourcing manager for Emerging Studio at Riot. Just means that I take care of R&D projects in production. And uh, I've been 20 years in gaming this year, 18 years in art outsourcing, and most of my time I work at Sims Maxis. But the first time I did or I fell into outsourcing is when I was at Massive Black. We have Massive Black China, and my managers couldn't talk to them. And everything that came back was wrong. And he was so frustrated. I guess I was the only Chinese in the team. He's like, you go talk to them. And he left. I was like, okay. But then I realized when my manager said upper body, they thought it was lower body. When he said left, they thought it was right. But they were also trying their best to learn English. That was not really a producer. And that was 2005 when out art outsourcing just started. So that's how I got my feet wet. And when I got to Maxis, the reason I got a job is no one else really wanted this job because artists, they just wanted to draw. They don't want to go to meetings. They don't want to be bothered. But I realized I was really good at this job. I was able to use my left brain and right brain at the same time, which it's not very common among the artists. So today the agenda is kind of like, I'll do a presentation for 25 minutes. We'll have a first and second question. I know on the agenda, it says one hour. We actually have one and a half hour. We'll take a little break. And then when we come back, if you guys have any question or something else you want to talk about, after the thank you back, I have more things in the back. If you guys want to dive into things, we'll see how it played out. So again, when you wanted to do art outsourcing, what do you think about your objective is? Provide high quality service or efforts in a timely manner, cost effectively. That sounds really logic, right? Yeah. But actually, you should say, I'm here to overcome communication barrier as an OS leader in your group to build trust and cultivate a safe 
and nurturing work environment so that the game dev team as well as their partners can execute effectively. So safe, nurturing, and effective. So when you think about communication, usually we're like, oh yeah, it's talking, ver verbal, person meeting, presentation, all hands, so on and so forth. But then it is also written. A lot of people overlook the documentation, the translation, the reviews, the emails, the text and Slack, and the tool and tracking system that you implement. Also, facial expression, body languages, and that varies across the world. So today, because of time, we'll just focus on cultural and hierarchical in terms of types of barrier in our communication. Just to make things very simple, we'll make Western Hemisphere, it's North America, West Europe, and Australia, etc. So North America includes Canada. And then we'll put the rest of them in non-Western, which is Asia, South America, and East Europe, etc. However, disclaimer, one is not better than the other. It's just a comparing an apple to oranges. So what is the goal of communication in this realm? It is comprehension. Even though you said something, sometimes you find your partner not really comprehending what you're saying and vice versa. So in a big dev team, there is this thing where we like, oh yeah, it's communication between me and my external partner, right? Well, it is also between you and your peer. Is the animation group communicating with the environment group? Is the, um, you know, all the disciplines and the people communicating to each other internally? And also, are you guys communicating up? Or when the leaders make a decision, did they communicate it down? So those are the challenges that I find, especially in brand new projects. And here we are doing this because with good communication, you could build trust and do the safe and nurturing work environment, right? Just to make sure that you understand and have a context of why things are the way it is, let's dive into it. So for the Western, you guys are mostly from the Western. We are so used to lateral leadership. Even though you might be below me, feel free to disagree with me if you have a good justification. So that's how we work, right? You want everyone to speak their mind. When the non-Western is extremely hierarchical, so only one person is talking, the others are obeying. It's something that most, I work at Riot, North American overlooked. And how does it work? Okay, so I already said, it's okay to disagree with your boss, but in the other side, an effort is made to defer to the boss opinion, especially in public. You do not disagree with your boss in public. And people on the Western side are more likely to move to action without having the boss okay, as long as you understand the objective or the vision that you are going towards. So also in a small dev team, we don't have time for micromanaging. You get the idea and then we all go. But on the non-Western side, that's not allowed. You always get to get the approvals, right? If things are out of ordinary. So on the left side, if meeting with a client, that is less focused on matching hierarchical levels. What do you mean by that? If you go to Japan, and you send your CEO, they will send your CEO. If you send your COO, they will send your COO. If they do not send your COO and they send you a junior something, that means they are disrespecting you. They don't think that you're important at all. That's how it is. But in the North America, where we are right now, it's just like, oh, are you available? Are you available? Okay, that so-and-so is coming. So we don't really match up one-to-one. -one. For the Western world, 
As long as you have capacity, you can talk to anyone. As long as the communication is being uh, done, prop, uh, uh, the message is being carried out. But for the non-Western, for me to talk to a peer, I have to go up the chain through their boss. Their boss talk to their boss, and that boss come down. I cannot talk straight to the peer from a different uh, uh, pillar. This is disrespecting the bosses up there, and that will get me in a big trouble. And with the Western world, when you go to a dinner or a big conference or a meeting, you will be seated so in bearing, like, oh, just sit, just take a seat. But in the non-Western, there is a way of sitting. Usually the most important people will be seated closer to the person in power. At the table where you have your meal or at the table where you have the meeting. If the person who, like the COO, is not there, there are certain arrangements where the guest of honor will be seated. For example, if you go to a Chinese restaurant where the table is round and not rectangle, the guest of honor will be ushered to sit in the innermost table because, you know, the waitress will come up with the dishes and they won't bump into you. So that's how it is. It's an unspoken rule. For the Western, we are so used to learning from your mistake. Even as parent, I'm a parent, when your kids fall down, we are like, oh yeah, just learn to get up. Or if you don't know how to do something, just make a lot of mistakes until you figure it out. That's very common. That is not common in the non-Western world. I grew up in Malaysia, and the emphasis on being perfect is up the roof. You have no threshold to make any mistake at all. I, in Malaysia, my name is not Xu Yi Lo. My name is so-and-so's daughter. If I made a mistake, that means my father will lose face. So the pressure's on. So in the Western world, we want our kids or our dev team to think independently or outside the box, especially when you start an R&D project or something that is exploratory, that is not launched yet or a live game. But in the non-Western world, you are expected to follow all the direction and adhere to the norm. If something is out of the ordinary, you defer it to your boss. You do not make something that is out of the ordinary. Open communication. That is very common, and I don't have to explain what is that here, but in non-Western world, it is not common. Only one person in the group is actively communicating. The other people are just receiving orders, and that's how it works. And in the Western world, we want everyone, including the IC, to be proactive in engagement. Let's talk about it. Let's discuss this. Let's do a brainstorm. Let's do blue sky. So on the non-Western world, you are passive until you ask a question. If you are not asked a question, you just keep quiet. When I go out with my dad when I was young for a, a dinner with his friends, I just stay quiet. The whole time. I'm not allowed to talk until an adult asks me a question. That's how it is. And in the Western world, we are so used to having everyone figure it out on their own. So that means you have to find creative solution. A lot of R&D space doesn't have a lot of budget or resources. So you have to be scrappy, right? In the non-Western world, you follow what has been done previously when dealing with challenges, you do not come up with a brand new idea because you are not somebody powerful. You are just like anyone else and I see. So in the Western world, we love constructive feedback. We are learning from each other. You are not allowed to do that in the non-Western world. You do not question existing norms or authority. You just follow. And in the Western world, we are very... We have a big emphasis on individualism. What do you want? Are you happy? In the non-Western world, you do whatever is good for the, for the group, for your family, for your community, for your company. You just follow. If it is good for you, but not for the community, you do not do it. Therefore, 
The ICs in the Western, or if you don't know what IC means, it's individual contributor, like the artists, the engineers. They are trained to be leaders in the Western world. But on the non-Western world, they are trained to be soldiers. So that's why they are not proactive. It is, if they are proactive, that means, and engaging, that means they are disrespecting you. They are climbing above you because you as a client, you are like God. You are like their boss. That's why they are not talking to you. In the Western world, because we are trained our children to be public speaker, to voice their opinion, they have higher confidence, but sometimes a little bit too high. Like my son, too much confidence. In the non-Western world, the IC shows more humility because they are trying to show respect to the person in power, but also they are not trained to voice their opinion all the time. So they are have very low self-confidence if something is not perfect. And in my opinion, nothing is perfect. So they are constantly having a self-doubt. It is very common in that region. In the Western world, you and my managers shows more humility. And leaders are there to serve the needs of others and to unblock things so that we can do our job. So a lot of times when you have one-on-one -on -one with your manager, your manager will say, what can I do for you? But on the non-Western world, the leaders, they display more authority. I'm just telling you what to do. And you are supposed to do it accordingly. In the Western world, when you join Riot, EA, Microsoft, Ubisoft, you are ready to trust your team. Let's do this game. Let's launch this game. Let's like crunch and stuff. But until you have a, you trust until you have bad experience. Maybe you got stabbed in the back, so on and so forth. And then you stop trusting. But when you first join, you trust. It's very natural. But in none. Western world, when they first join or when they first approach you, they don't trust. That's the first instinct. And that's also more apparent in the Eastern European culture because of how they look at how their parents react to things. So that's how they react to things. So the first instinct is not to trust until we start sitting down and drink beer together. That's when you start trusting. But before that, it is really hard for them to trust. It takes a very long time. But once they trust, they are extremely loyal. So conflict arises when there are assumptions that somebody else thinks just like you. But then you're like, why aren't they talking to me? Why aren't they sharing? Why aren't they telling me when I made a mistake? So this is what you should do when you work with Western or non-Western artists. When you work with Western artists, to empower them, you give them ownership when they are fully ramped up. So you're like, take this idea and run with it. You enforce alignment and consistency because a lot of times what I find when I go into a new dev team, especially North America, they are young, they are talented, they pick up the idea and run so far that they are not aligned with the rest of the team. It happens so often. When I come in, I will ask, when was the last time you guys aligned? Oh, we aligned three months ago. I'm like, great. So to work with the Western, you have to constantly make sure alignment is there and consistency. I work at Sims for 14 years. If you want me to put the summary in terms of what I was looking for and my objective, I would say consistency in terms of art, in terms of quality, so on and so forth. So when you have such a great idea and you run with it, you are so indulged in it. The hard thing with North American ICs is to make commitment. What good looks like, make a final decision and then we can move on. Sometimes what good looks like it's so beautiful that it's not sustainable and scalable. So as a leader, you need to hone them down and make sure that you can help them to see long term. And then you also give them freedom, especially on exploratory work. Like I said, take this idea and run with it. Usually American artists go and then they go. 
and start doing their magic. And uh, a lot of times, especially now, I notice a lot of younger ICs have no exposure to how the rest of the world works. America is so big, it's harder for them to look outward. They constantly look inward. And also, with, because of that, they don't understand other cultures, unspoken role. And what I have been doing is educating them in terms of how the rest of the world works. They are not trying to offend you. It's just how they work. But we are not here to change the rest of the world in one night. So we have to give them respect. <laughs> when you work with a non-Western artist, you have to remember to give them permission to be proactive and engaging. And when you do that, immediately after that, you also have to give them a lot of encouragement and empowerment to do the first thing, which is give permission to be proactive and engaging. They have not done that before. And every time they do it, they get negative repercussion. So what you do is, well, what I do is, I always say, I love stupid questions. Please ask stupid questions and help me suggest better way of doing things. But there will no, be no negative precaution when things are not perfect or when they point out the client, which is my mistake. I want them to point out my mistake. And with a lot of these uh, new collaboration, what I did is the first few sprints is just to find, uh, it's just like a trial run. So finding somebody else's mistake is actually a success in this time. You don't want to find somebody else's mistake two weeks before launch. You want to do it in the first few sprint. Sometimes when the teams are larger or the work is more complicated, you might want to do this for two months at least. That will give each other a way of getting used to how each other think or work and be comfortable. Give boundaries of exploratory work. Never tell a non-Western artist, take this idea and run. What happens is they'll have a panic attack because they're not used to uh, uh, no boundaries. So what you do is you give them this invisible boundary so they feel protected and they feel safe. So you said, these are places I don't want you to go and we already explore. And these are places that we would like you to take a step forward and they will feel safer working in that mentality. So learn to work outside comfort zone. So you kind of have to hold your hand the first few sprint or rounds when they do exploratory work. And when they tell you you did something wrong or they make a suggestion that to correct what you have said before to public. So every time you do that, you can say, you can give them a positive reinforcement this way they will slowly come on their shell. And if you have the budget, feel free to do it during an in-person on-site training. And let's have a few, uh, let's look over a few examples of how we talk to our Western and non-Western team. Well, I am Riot. So this is very Californian. Californian are very sensitive. So when you want to say something or to correct a Californian, you would say, thank you for taking time to send out the team email. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't see a date for the art lock in the email. Am I mistaken? But in the non-Western world, if you said that, and if you can imagine that is being translated, it is very confusing. So what you say is you did not include the date of the art lock in the team email. Can you fix it? That is very direct. That is what they need. Also, in the East European culture, if you talk in the Western world way, they will think that you don't trust them because you are way too polite. So do it in the non-Western way. Another one, great job in addressing the discrepancy in the milestone deadline. However, this is sugar coating. Yeah. However, may I bring your attention to the updated schedule sent out this morning in the team Slack channel? In the non-Western world, you did not look at the correct schedule. The updated one is sent out this morning on the team Slack channel, right? And then giving direction for Western IC, 
you should do it in the question format. I always tell my non-Western point of contact that. John, would you like to work on the documentation? In the non-Western world, John, work on the documentation. I'm not saying that you're John. <laughs> Come on, John. <laughs> See, usually when you tell a non-Western, uh, a Western person to work on something or do go left, they will usually turn right. But that's how it is because my son's like that. So Western, these are the weapons for the next milestone. Which knife would you like to start working on first? In the non-Western, these are the weapons for the next milestone. Please work on the knife first before the guns, right? And also when you have children, when they are young, you will say, honey, do you want the red shoes or the green shoes? Do you want to wear a skirt or do you want to wear pants? But in the non-Western world, they just put, they just dress the kid up in perfect attire. They don't question anything. So all the Asian kids actually look perfect. And then I see American kids just running around with no shoes. I'm like, wow. <laughs> but that's great. So uh, before I go to this, I wanted to clarify that with Gen, with the millennial and Gen Z, uh, not just idiomatic, sarcasm and joke. There was a lot of swearing. But it is not in a negative light. It's just because I know you so well, I swear at you and you allow me to swear in front of you because we're really close. For example, you know, my daughter, she FaceTime with her best friend all the time. But when the screen comes on, they go, yo, bitch, right? And then she, I was like, wait, what? But that's what they call each other. And it is like, have you heard their playlist? She has a playlist called Odie's for when my friends comes over. Well, there is Mariah Carey. Yes, Mariah Carey is considered Odie's. But when she plays her song, I'm like, oh my God. So let's look at this. You hit it out of the ballpark, you badass. That happened at The Sims to a Chinese artist. And she was so confused. <laughs> and then my art director is just like, well, you know, like baseball, you know? And she goes, I don't play ball. And because he said badass, and she was so shocked and embarrassed, she didn't know what, how to react. So to a non-Western artist, what you should do is say, great job, John. Straightforward. For the, another thing is, you are the shit. Did you just pull that out of your hat? So somebody said that to me when I first came to America. And to me, you know, shit, shit means, uh, you know, shit, bathroom shit. And like, oh shit, like something terrible happened or like when you're a deep shit. So when I'm the shit, I'm like, did I do something terrible? So it took him 10 minutes to explain to me. And after that, it's just like, I, I was, <laughs> it did not work. So the way to do it is what? On the non-Western side of things. Great job, John. <laughs> and another really controversial thing, especially when we work with service provider from around the world, this is a very common conflict or mis misconception. So what does seniority mean? And what do you expect for a person who has the word senior or director on their job title? So in the Western world, when I promote someone to senior or director, that means they exhibit leadership quality and maturity in handling difficult situations, right? What does that look like? So they are visionary for the team or for their discipline. They might be uh, environment lead or animation lead, right? They enforce alignment and best practices within their realm. They are calm and collected. So a lot of American peers ask me, why didn't I get promoted? It's because of this. Calm and collected when dealing with challenges. They troubleshoot challenges using creative solution with very, very little handholding from the leadership. They also contribute to the overall well-being and they instill trust within their team or within their discipline. And 
This is very important. For a leader, you need to be able to mentor and guide and teach the team to adhere to mature framework and adhere to the final vision of the game. But for the non-Western, what does that mean? It just means that you have been doing this for a really, really, really long time. That's all it meant. So a lot of times when Western and non-Western work together, and the Western dev team expect the non-Western seniors or art director or director of some sort to do something on the left, it doesn't work that way. But they didn't communicate that in the start of the collaboration. So that's where the tension comes in. So for the non-Western, it just means I'm the expert on my own craft. If I'm an animator, I'm very good at animating. But however, one thing good is when you give them a framework that you already know what you want, they can take it to the next level, sometimes even better than North Americans could take it. And they will perfect that pipeline for you. So that's what I love about working with non-Western. When they face challenges, they might still wait for you to tell them what to do and how to move forward, even when they are a director or a senior. That's because they are showing you respect because you are higher up in the chain. Another thing is, a lot of times we took for granted how long of a, a history we have in game development. In America, you can find people who have two decades, even three decades of experience, right? But in non-Western world, like let's say South America, it's roughly about 10 years of history. So their senior something something might just be our mid-level. But then when, when the South American introduced somebody to you, he's really good, he's my senior. And then you have all this expectation from the orange side. It doesn't align. That's when I see a lot of, they lie to me. They give me this mid-level person that I pay pre Well, did you ask? Did you align? Did you understand the culture? So that's where the tension comes in as well because you don't have the context. So on the North American side of things, what do I expect when, uh, from my seniors and director levels personnel? When they approach me, the leadership, with a problem, it is because they already tried a few solutions and they couldn't figure it out. They figure it out, but they need my approval or my power to unblock a few things for them in order to carry out that solution. And they are making this decision, this solution that have wider impact outside of their jurisdiction and or it costs more than the budget that they can approve. That's why they need my approval. But after dealing with the problem, I expect them to give proper documentation for future references. And they, I expect them to also enforce the better way of doing things in the future without me telling them to do so. I also expect them to guide and mentor other people who is facing the same problem in the future. That's what my expectation is. So, when you start a collaboration when there's Eastern and Western personnel, you should always make sure that you have clear expectation and objective. So over communicating is much better than assumptions. A lot of times what I say is, when I, after I explain something, I will ask someone, now repeat what I just said. What did you think I said? And if I can speak their language, sometimes I will allow them to speak in their language. What do you think I asked you to do? What do you have to deliver next week? So I asked them to repeat what they think they said, uh, I said. <laughs>